Hi, this is Mike Robbins and I'll be walking you through creating a web service using Entity Service. Okay, so the idea for this application is to populate this Speak application with data from Entity Service. So at the top of the page here we have a list control where we're going to list out a selection of news articles from the Psycho CMS. We can then click on one of the articles, populate this form below and then allow the user to make some changes and then submit the changes back to Psycho. Uh, the user can also fill in these fields and insert a new news article into Psycho and they can also select an article and delete one. Let's jump into Visual Studio and we'll create the service. So the first step we need to do is create our model which will be exposed over Entity Service. So we add a new class here, we'll call it News Article. So all models need to implement Entity Identity. So if we look at the base class, it gives you the properties that are required for Entity Service to work, such as our ID and our URL. What we can do then, if we implement all the properties of our item that's in Psycho, so we have a string on our item called title. We have another property, which is also a string called description. And finally, we have a date time called date. If you're using the JavaScript library for entity service, it will automatically handle the map in between .NET objects and JavaScript objects. We can also use standard .NET attributes to decorate these properties. So for example, we could say the title field is required and the validation will be handled then by entity service. Because we're using speak uh, to bind some of these controls, uh, some of the speak up um, components require a string field called item ID to work correctly. So we save that class. The next part of creating our service is to create our repository. So to do that, we'll create a class in our repository folder and call it news article repository. So the repository is where all the logic of our web service is written. So everything, so each repository has to implement our repository of our model. So our news article. So if we implement that interface, you see we get the functionality of the service. So we get a method to get all all news articles, to find one by ID, to add a new news article, check if one exists, an update method, and also a delete. So if I implement some code I've already written here. you can see I've written the Psycho uh, data access code to... Okay, let's just fix that bug there. Okay, so the final part of creating the service is to create our controller. So we're going to create a new controller in our controllers folder. If we call this news articles controller. For entity service to work, we got to decorate it, our service, our controller, with services controller. And we need to implement entity service of our model. Which is our news article. So if we then implement that base class, you can see it's taken in an instance of our repository. So if we create a concrete instance of our repository here on our constructor, we can 
new one, so repository. Okay. We can also decorate our controller with authorization filters to lock down the service even further to local domains, for example. Psycho Entity Service comes with a number of them out of the box. In the configuration file, you can you can comment in which ones you require. So anything done within the config file will replicate across all your services. If you just want to add an authorization filter to one service alone, then you could do it at the controller level here. Okay, if we save and build. Okay. There's three ways we can consume a entity service. Firstly, we can use PsychoSpeak components to bind to our entity service. We can also use REST calls. So you can see here we take Psycho API SSE, which is the prefix for using entity service. We then take the namespace to our controller, replacing the dots with hyphens. So you can see Mike Robbins hyphen entity service demo hyphen controllers. That's matching up to our controller here. So you can see the same namespace and then our controller name here. So you can see when we hit this URL, we return with a list of our entities, our news articles. This is going through into our repository through our controller and hitting the get all method, which is returning our array of, of news articles. Similarly, if I take a single item from here, an ID, pass that in here, you can see we return a single news article and that's going through to our find by ID method here. If we go into our Psycho Speak application, and clear our cache, You can see now we're getting a list of news articles at the top. So to show you the page code for this Psycho Speak application. So what we've done here, we're setting up our entity service. So we create a new instance of entity service after requiring in the library for entity service. We then pass it the same URL I just mentioned. And then we have a get news articles function I've written here, which is creating our instance of an entity service, getting a reference to our data source, which our this control here is bound to. We then call the fetch entities method of our service, which wires up to our get all method in our repository, calling our execute. And then this returns a Java, uh, JSON array of our news articles. And we then set the data source items property to our array, which binds that, which in turn then binds into our collection, our list control here. When we cl click one of these articles, you can see we are filling in the form below. So the way this works, we have an item selected method here, which I'm raising an event whenever the a different item is selected within the list control. And so what we're doing here, we're calling fetch entity on our instance of our entity service again. Instead here, we're passing in our selected item ID, which is the ID of the element that's selected here, which is the same ID shown here. We then call an execute again, which returns a single news article and then we bind in all the properties of the form control, so our ID, title, description, date field, to the data that's been returned in this function here. Let's just come out here. If we reset this form, if we enter some new data, add some more fields, we select a date, if we then call save, We've created a new article and there it's displayed there. So if we then look at the code for this, we have the add article function. Again, we create an instance of our entity service. This time we're creating a JSON representation of our 
model. So we pass we create in the title, description, and date with the relevant fields from the form. This time we call create on our service, passing in the JSON object of our article, call and execute again, and then we can return the newly created article. And in this case, we're popping up a notification message and resetting the form and then reloading the list control at the top. Finally, the delete function. So we select one of our items and we call the delete article. We delete the article, and refresh the screen. So the, mark, the JavaScript code for this, so we're going to a delete article method here. Again, we create an instance of our entity service. This time we fetch the entity similar to we did up here. Passing in the ID of the item selected. So this returns the news article. We then call destroy on the news article. And then we pop up a success message. So this destroy wires up to our delete method within our repository. All the source for this project is on GitHub. So you can download this project, install it into your solution.